Assalamu alaikum. In today's session, we are going to discuss the production function approach to analysis of economic growth. So, uh, we have already discussed a number of different theoretical models that explain the process of economic growth, but and we also discuss in those in those uh, different types of th theoretical contributions that what are the different factors or determinants or variables that are considered to be very important in order to expedite or accelerate the process of economic growth in an economy. But it is important to note down that which important variable plays what type of role or what is going to be the intensity of each of these factors that expedite the overall economic process. So by using this particular concept of the production function approach to economic growth, it, it becomes relatively easier to assess that what is going to be the contribution or what will be the contribution of labor factor input in explaining the process of growth. Similarly, we can figure out and identify the impact of capital factor input in order to find out its impact on the overall economic growth and then at, at the same time we can also come up with the contribution that is because of the increase in the productivity of the labor force or the overall production process and that can be also uh, uh, disaggregated or can be considered as an, an important component that explains the process of economic growth separately. So as long as this production function approach is concerned, this is used to categorically identify the relevant impact of each of these different components that together contribute in expediting or explaining the variation in the economic growth of an economy. So basically this particular approach uh, disaggregates the sources of growth that are into the contribution of each of the different types of factors such as I just mentioned the labor's contribution in growth, the capital's contribution in growth and the technical progress uh, contribution in explaining the variations in the growth and as long as this particular approach is concerned this is a supply oriented approach because we will be looking from the perspective of the production function and the as long as the sources of growth in this uh, particular approach is concerned, they are exogenous factors. We will assume that there are variations in the labor that are not being explained by the factors that are accounted for in the production function. We would say that there are variations in the labor factor input or there are, there are more of the capital accumulation or some sort of capital has been inject, injected into the economy and how this increase or decrease of, the, of different factor inputs are eventually contributing towards explaining the variation in the economic growth. As long as the overall model is constructed, we need to see that uh, whenever we construct a function, a macroeconomic function in particular, hypothetically it is assumed and it is uh, considered as an important condition also that the macroeconomic function it has to have a, a proper microeconomic background. So when we look at this production function approach, we have borrowed this uh, technique of the production function which we discussed um, when, we, uh, when we do the production analysis in microeconomics. So we have simply borrowed this technique from microeconomics and we will be considering uh, the overall economy as a sum of of different types of individual firms in which uh, all these factor inputs are being accounted for and eventually some sort of level of output will be produced and when you are treating every single firm as an individual entity later on all these individual firms output and factor inputs are aggregated together and this is how we explain it in terms of, an mac of a macroeconomic model or a macroeconomic production function in which uh, all together all the four factor inputs are accounted for. So basically we define the production function as a function where y is defined as uh, dependent upon the four factor inputs which we all know uh, where r stands for the land, k is the capital, l is labor and t stands for the technology. So if we consider land also as a part of capital K. Uh, we can simplify this uh, production function which is right now being uh, taken up as a function of uh, four important uh, factor inputs. So uh, for the simplicity sake what we do is we commonly take into account only two factor inputs. We club land uh, in, into the capital and uh, K also count for the, for the wealth which is uh, considered to be uh, in terms of land 
ownership. So, um, similarly, when we talk about uh, you know, the technology, that is also accounted for as a, as a separate entity in the production function in, in the form of uh, different notations, which I'm just going to describe to you later on. But uh, as long as this production function is concerned, another advantage of um, sh shortening the four factor inputs uh, as two factor inputs, K and L, it becomes easy for us to plot the function uh, on a two dimensional uh, Cartesian plane where we take into account the most variable factor input on one axis and the other factor input on the uh, on the on the vertical axis and this is how we come up with certain isoquants that represent different levels of uh, uh, output uh, corresponding to different factor combinations of both capital and labor. So the thing which you will be seeing right now uh, represents the different levels of output that can be produced in an economy as a whole. So we have taken L along the x-axis, L is the labor input and we have taken the capital input being represented or symbolized by capital K along the vertical axis. So you are seeing these negatively sloping convex to the origin isoquants. So higher isoquants quant means a higher level of output that can be obtained by going for a higher level of labor and a higher value of capital so on and so forth so when you move towards the origin the isoquants represent lower levels of output whereas if you move away from the origin the isoquants represent a higher level of output so uh, again we see that there are, according to the situations that are prevailing in an economy, we see that whatever amount of capital or labor factor input is available in an economy at a certain time period, that plays a significant role in explaining what is going to be the total production level in the entire economy as a whole, or what is going to be the total output which can be explained as, a, as being produced by using these factor inputs, the technology, labor, capital, labor input and the capital input. So so in this diagram that we are assuming the level of technology constant, we can have different levels of output. But again, we need to see that depending upon the constraints that are available, that are there in a country, uh, L is constrained, capital is also constrained. So particularly in the context of a developing country, we observe that capital is not the what like in insufficient amount or in a large quantity capital is also always available it, it's a scarce factor input and it is available up to a certain level so if you look back at the same isoquant graph what we discussed earlier we can see that capital factor input suppose is constrained at a certain level as like in the second case in the second diagram which you will be seeing right now you can see that capital for example the maximum amount of capital which is available in an economy is given as K1 and there are multiple values of the labor force or the labor values which you can go for you can keep on expanding the labor input as much as you want to up to a certain level so if we suppose if we are having capital K1 and labor force L1 we are producing at ISO quant 1 suppose this yields or this corresponds to the total output level of 100 units similarly by keeping capital constant at K1, if we increase the labor factor input from L1 to L2, we, you can see that we can move further on a higher isoquant corresponding to a higher level of output, which suppose we, we can take as the total units that can be produced by taking labor equal to L2 and capital, which is kept constant, fixed at K1. So the total level of output which can be produced now is suppose 200 units. But again, as I just mentioned, that is because in the development developing countries, capital is constrained or in lesser quantity, therefore we are fixing capital at K1 and we can improve uh, as per as long as the total output is concerned, we can increase the total output by adding more labor force into this production function. So suppose if we take L3 labor input instead of L2, the capital is fixed at K1, the total output that can be produced will be given by the third isoquant that corresponds to, for example, 300 units of output. So if we try to move further or if we try to increase the total output beyond this point, it is not possible because capital is constrained. So you can see that the fourth isoquant falls above 
this level of K1. So if you want to jump from this, this third isoquant corresponding to 300 units to the fourth isoquant which corresponds to the 400 units, you will have to have more capital. Even if you are employing alone the labor input, if you are hiring more and more of labor input and keep keeping capital constant and K1, it will not be possible to move beyond isoquant number 3 that corresponds to 300 units of output. So if you want to expand your total output further, I mean more than 300 units, you will have to have more capital input, otherwise it will, be, uh, it will not be possible to um, increase the total output level beyond this point. So this is the constraint. So this is how whatever capital factor input or whatever total quantity of labor force is available in an economy, they put a constraint that beyond this point you cannot expand. So if you f want to further expand uh, the total output level of the entire economy, you will have to increase either the total quantity of capital factor input or the labor factor input or there will be certain combinations of total output which require a higher level of both the factor inputs, uh, I mean to say both capital and labor. So if, you, if we analyze the different types of sources that can help us in increasing or expanding the total output level or that can help us in increasing the growth of an economy, there are these three factors that play a significant role. Firstly, we need to see that if we increase the factor supplies, both capital and labor, only then it is possible for us to increase the growth of an economy. And secondly, there is another important aspect which we need to understand and that is if the production function is subject to increasing returns, then again, by keeping the same levels of factor inputs, we can have a sufficiently larger amount of total output. So uh, another important thing which we need to see, and I hope that um, I'm assuming that you know what is meant by increasing returns to scale. So um, by increasing returns to scale, we mean that if we double the factor inputs, output more than doubles. So for example, um, I'll, I'll try to explain it once again. कि अगर हम एक मजदूर और एक यूनिट ऑफ कैपिटल को हायर करने से वन यूनिट ऑफ आउटपुट को प्रोड्यूस कर रहे हैं इफ द प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन इज सेट टू बी सब्जेक्ट टू इंक्रीजिंग रिटर्न्स टू स्केल या वो इंक्रीजिंग रिटर्न्स टू स्केल शो करती है तो अगर आप कैपिटल को और लेबर दोनों फैक्टर इनपुट्स को डबल करते हैं तो आपका आउटपुट टू यूनिट से ज्यादा होना जा रहा है सो सपोज इफ इन द सेम एग्जांपल आई एम कंटिन्यूइंग विद इट अगर लेबर को हम पहले एक यूनिट से एक यूनिट ऑफ लेबर एक यूनिट ऑफ कैपिटल लगाने से हम टोटल आउटपुट एक यूनिट ऑफ आउटपुट प्रोड्यूस कर रहे थे नाउ इफ यू डबल यानी कि अगर हम दो मजदूर और दो यूनिट्स ऑफ कैपिटल को इस्तेमाल करके टोटल आउटपुट प्रोड्यूस करते हैं तो अगर वो दो यूनिट्स से ज्यादा है तो दैट मींस द प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन इज सब्जेक्ट टू इंक्रीजिंग रिटर्न्स टू स्केल सो वंस अगैन वी कैन एक्सपीरियंस इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ इन एन इकोनॉमी इवन इफ द फैक्टर सप्लाईज आर नॉट इंक्रीज एंड द प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन इज सब्जेक्ट टू इंक्रीजिंग रिटर्न्स टू स्केल देन बाय डबलिंग द फैक्टर इनपुट्स देयर वुड बी मोर देन डबल टाइम्स द टोटल इंक्रीज इन द आउटपुट सो वी सी that the economic growth or the economy will expand rapidly if the production function to which it is subject to ya economy mein jo bhi production ke techniques hain agar unme hame increasing returns to scale mil rahi hai to wahan bhi agar aap factor inputs ko usi tanasub se ya proportion se increase nahi kar rahe aapki output many times more increase karegi so that is one another source of economic growth third important source of economic growth is the technical progress so we see that if technology advancements take place, they also contribute significantly in expanding the overall total national output of an economy. So this is also uh, considered as one of the major or important source of economic growth as long as the production function approach is explained or is accounted for. So if I explain the same thing, we discussed it as a general production function where we were assuming that production function is a function or is dependent upon four factor inputs which can be simplified by considering just two which play an, a very important role or a significant role jab hum lene ja rahe the sirf labor ke contribution ko aur capital ke contribution ko humne production function ko simplify kiya tha uske piche ek aur wajah ye thi ke agar hum sirf do factor inputs ko account for karte hain then uh, it gets really really easy for us to draw the thing 
ऑन अ कार्टिसियन प्लेन अगर हमारे पास दो एक्सेस वाला डायग्राम है तो हम कैपिटल और लेबर को बहुत नाइसली उसके उन एक्सेस के ऊपर लेके अपनी जो भी चेंजेस हैं इकोनॉमिक एक्सपेंशन हो रही है या कॉन्ट्रैक्शन हो रही है वी कैन शो दिस थिंग सो दे फॉर इट बिकम्स ईजी फॉर आस अगर हम सिर्फ दो फैक्टर इनपुट्स को ले लें फोर फैक्टर इनपुट्स की बजाय सो एन अदर वे ऑफ सिंप्लीफाइंग और एनालाइजिंग द प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन अप्रोच इन डीपर डिटेल इज दैट वी टेक द कॉप डगलस प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन एज अ स्पेसिफिक प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन एंड बाई यूजिंग द कॉप डगलस प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन वी ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन वॉट ईच हाउ टू वॉट एक्सटेंट ईच एंड एवरी फैक्टर इनपुट इज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग इन एक्सप्लेनिंग द ओवरऑल टोटल नेशनल आउटपुट विच हैज बीन प्रोड्यूस्ड सो अगैन जैसे मैंने पहले मैंशन किया किसी भी मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक मॉडल के थ्योरेटिकल बैकग्राउंड को साउंड होने के लिए इट इज नेसेसरी कि उसकी कोई माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक बैकिंग होना चाहिए उसका बैकग्राउंड होना चाहिए जो कि माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स से बोरो किया जाए या उसके स्टैंडिंग होने चाहिए एक्सप्लेनेशन होना चाहिए कि हमने ये वहां से डिराइव करा है सो सिमिलरली कॉप डगलस प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन एक्सप्लेन्स द प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन फॉर अ सर्टन फर्म And over here we are generalizing it for the economy. So हमने फिर माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स से एक कॉन्सेप्ट को बोरो किया है कॉप डगलस प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन के टू एक्सप्लेन के इफ वी फॉलो द प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन अप्रोच हाउ बाई यूजिंग दिस कॉप डगलस प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन और द रोल प्लेड बाय लेबर फैक्टर इनपुट टेक्नोलॉजी कैपिटल एटसेट्रा ये सब के सब की कितनी हद तक की कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन है हम उसको कैटेगोरिकली सेपरेट कर सकते हैं डिसग्रीगेट कर सकते हैं और उसको मैयर किया जा सकता है सो द थिंग विच यू आर सींग राइट नाउ इज a generic form of cop douglas production function and it has been written as yt equals to a capital t with a subscript small t times capital uh, k t is the subscript alpha is the superscript or phir ye multiply ho rahi hai another factor input se which is l or l is raised to the power beta and the subscript which you are seeing attached with l k t and y all are there और वहां हमने टी को एक सब्सक्रिप्ट के तौर पे इस्तेमाल किया है और ये सभी जो स्मॉल टीज हैं ये बता रहे हैं कि जो हमारा इनकम है टोटल इनकम टोटल नेशनल इनकम ऑफ एन इकोनॉमी टेक्नोलॉजिकल कंट्रीब्यूशन जो टेक्नोलॉजी है वो या टोटल अगर प्रोडक्टिविटी को हम अगर इससे एसेस करना चाहें तो दैट अलॉन्ग विद द कैपिटल फैक्टर इनपुट द लेबर फैक्टर इनपुट ये चारों वेरिएबल्स टाइम पीरियड के हिसाब से अकाउंट फॉर होंगे या दे विल वेरी ओवर टाइम सो हम टाइम के ऊपर अगर इनके इनको मॉनिटर करें या वॉच करें तो दे आर गोइंग टू वेरी सो दैट मीन्स दे आर डिपेंडेंट अपॉन द टाइम पीरियड ऑल्सो सो दे विल बी चेंजिंग as when time will move on secondly another important thing which i want to explain as long as this cop douglas production function is concerned uh, you are seeing the superscript alpha at the top of capital factor input and then you are seeing beta which has been used as a power or an exponent of the labor factor input so alpha is the proportion with which capital factor input will be accounted for in the production and beta is the contribution of the labor factor input so if these two alpha and beta play a very significant role in explaining the nature of the production function we are dealing with so as long as this the sum of these two cof द एक्सपोनेंट्स इज कंसर्न अगर हम एल्फा और बीटा को एड करते हैं तो द एडिशन द एडिड सम ऑफ दीज टू पावर्स ऑफ के एंड एल रिस्पेक्टिवली टेल आस अबाउट द नेचर ऑफ द प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन सो एल्फा प्लस बीटा इफ अमाउंट टू बी a plus 1 then we say that the production function is subject to constant returns to scale however if alpha plus beta aggregate ya unko dono ko jama karne se jo bhi unki value hogi in a certain production function if they aggregate to be smaller than 1 we say that the production function is subject to decreasing returns to scale and if alpha plus beta ka apne sam nikala hai and that sum is larger than 1 then we say that the production function is subject to increasing returns to scale so abhi kuch minute pehle maine aapko increasing returns to scale explain kiya hai um, decreasing returns to scale means that if by doubling the factor inputs agar hum factor inputs ko double kare aur aapka output double hone ki bajaye less than double ho yani ke agar aapne ek ek unit capital aur labor ko lekar ek unit of output ko produce kiya hai 
अगर आप कैपिटल और लेबर को डबल कर देते हैं यानी कि एक यूनिट ऑफ कैपिटल लेबर दोनों को लेने के बजाय दो दो यूनिट्स ऑफ कैपिटल एंड लेबर रिस्पेक्टिवली लें तो आपका आउटपुट अगर टू यूनिट्स हो जाए तो हम बोलते हैं प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन इज सब्जेक्ट टू कॉन्स्टेंट रिटर्न्स टू स्केल अगर द रिजल्टिंग टोटल आउटपुट इज मोर देन टू यूनिट्स वी से दैट द प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन इज सब्जेक्ट टू इंक्रीजिंग रिटर्न टू स्केल एंड इफ द सम ऑफ द टू Alpha plus beta is smaller than one. We, that indicates कि अगर हम capital और labor input को double करते हैं आपका total output less than double होगी यानी कि अभी जो मैंने example दिया अगर suppose by doubling L and K आपकी जो total output है वो double होने की बजाय वो हो जाती है पहले वो वन थी अभी वो वन पॉइंट फाइव हो गई सो जो एडिशन आपने दोनों फैक्टर इनपुट्स को डबल किया है उसने आपको सिर्फ हाफ ऑफ हाफ ऑफ आ टोटल आउटपुट हाफ यूनिट ऑफ टोटल आउटपुट एड करके दिया सो दैट मीन्स दैट दिस प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन यू आर डीलिंग विद इज सब्जेक्ट टू द डिक्रीजिंग रिटर्न टू स्केल एंड सिम्बॉलिकली दिस विल बी रिप्रेजेंटेड अगर वॉट एवर कॉपडग्लस प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन यू हैव अकाउंटेड फॉर इफ द सम ऑफ एल्फा एंड बीटा इज स्मॉलर देन वन वी से दैट इट इंडिकेट्स द डिक्रीजिंग रिटर्न टू स्केल नाउ इफ यू हैव गॉट अ सर्टन कॉपडग्लस प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन दिस कैन बी यूज to quantify the exact contribution that has been made by each of these three factor inputs jo maine bhi liya tha technology ko labor ko aur capital ko aap har ek ne kitna contribute kiya hai total output ko produce karne ke liye aap usko measure kar sakte hain so um, for that what we do is hum abhi jo humne production function dekhi thi usko linearize karenge aur koi bhi non linear production function hai ya koi bhi non linear function hota hai hum usko linearize kaise karte hain agar when we see that we are having a certain function and there are certain variables which are raised to the power मोर देन वन जिनकी पावर अगर कोई डेसीमल वैल्यूज में बैठी हुई है या कोई रेशोज में है और अगर उनकी पावर वन नहीं है वन से ज्यादा है या वन से कम है तो ऐसे के फंक्शन को हम बोलते हैं दे आर द नॉ लीनियर फंक्शन सो नॉ लीनियर फंक्शन को लीनियर बनाने के लिए द ईजिएस्ट वे इज टू टेक द लॉग ऑफ बोथ साइड सो अभी जो मैंने आपको फंक्शन दिखाई थी कॉपडग्लस प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन दैट वॉज गिवन एज वाई टी इक्वल्स टू अ कैपिटल टी डॉट capital k dot raised to the power alpha and then there was l which was raised to the power beta so we saw that jo power to which capital factor input and labor factor input are raised to are alpha and beta and we are assuming that it is not necessary that they will always be equivalent to one there will be there may be instances in which alpha or beta ke koi aur values ho sakte hain so in that case function ko hame linearize karna padega क्यों क्योंकि हम L ने कितना कंट्रीब्यूट किया है Y को बनाने में कैपिटल ने कितना कंट्रीब्यूट किया किया है Y को बनाने के लिए कैपिटल T यानी कि टेक्नोलॉजी ने कितना कंट्रीब्यूट किया है टोटल आउटपुट को बनाने के लिए उस सब चीजों को हम डिसग्रीगेट करके उनके इंडिविजुअल इंपैक्ट को आप मैयर किया कर सकते हैं सो इन ऑर्डर टू डू दैट द फर्स्ट थिंग वी विल हैव टू डू इज हमें इसको लीनियराइज करना पड़ेगा और उसके लिए हम लॉग लेंगे सो so, जब हमने लॉग लिया इसका तो फंक्शन आपके पास बन गई लॉग ऑफ वाई इक्वल्स टू लॉग ऑफ कैपिटल टी प्लस आपकी जो एक्सपोनेंट है कैपिटल की पावर एल्फा वो उठ के मल्टीप्लीकेटिव टर्म बन जाएगी इट विल बिकम एल्फा डॉट लॉग ऑफ के प्लस बीटा टाइम्स लॉग ऑफ एल सो ये फंक्शन आपके पास लीनियर हुआ है नाउ द थिंग वी आर ट्राइंग टू फाइंड आउट इज द ग्रोथ रेट और ग्रोथ रेट को निकालने के लिए हमें इस फंक्शन की डेरिवेटिव लेनी पड़ेगी विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टाइम बिकॉज हमने एस्यूम किया था कि ये सारे के सारे वेरिएबल्स टाइम के साथ में वेरी करने जा रहे हैं सो इफ वी टेक द टाइम डेरिवेटिव ऑफ ईच ऑफ दीज फोर वेरिएबल्स द थिंग विच वी गेट इज समथिंग दैट कैन बी सीन राइट नाउ ऑन द स्क्रीन आप उसको लिख सकते हैं द थिंग विच यू आर गोइंग टू गेट बाय टेकिंग द डेरिवेटिव ऑफ दिस होल इक्वेशन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टाइम इट विल बी रिटर्न एज डेरिवेटिव ऑफ लॉग ऑफ वाई विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टाइम विच इज इक्वल एंड टू डेरिवेटिव ऑफ लॉग ऑफ द टेक्नोलॉजी विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टाइम एंड देन प्लस एल्फा टाइम्स डेरिवेटिव ऑफ लॉग ऑफ के विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टाइम प्लस बीटा टाइम्स 
the derivative of log of L with respect to time. So again we, we know हमने maths में का rule है कि अगर आप derivative निकाल रहे हैं किसी variable का जिसका log लिया गया है तो what we do is यहाँ आपको मैंने एक formula add करके दिए है that for example if we have a function which is written as natural log of u और इसकी derivative आपको निकालनी है with respect to x तो it will be 1 over u multiplied by du with respect to x. So derivative हम निकालेंगे du का with respect to x और इसको multiply कर देंगे with the reciprocal of u. Right? Because क्यों ऐसा करें? Because u का हमारे original function में जिसका derivative निकालना था वो log के form में था. So we will follow the same rule of logarithmic differentiation और हम ये जो अभी equation हमने बनाई थी construct किया था Cobb Douglas को linearize करने से यानी कि उसका log लेने से हम ये rule उसके ऊपर apply करेंगे and as a result you will see that you will get the derivative of variable y with respect to time multiplied by the reciprocal of variable y and this will give you the growth rate of income over time and this will be equivalent to the derivative of technology with respect to time multiplied by the reciprocal of technology value and this will be added to alpha times uh, again we will follow the same rule and it will tell it will give you uh, alpha multiplied by the reciprocal of capital multiplied by the derivative of capital with respect to time plus beta times the derivative of labor factor input with respect to time multiplied by the reciprocal of l so again mene mene bhi refer kiya mene aapko bataya ke hum चूंकि हमारे पास फंक्शन जिसका डेरिवेटिव लेना था उसमें हमारे पास वेरिएबल्स लॉग के फॉर्म में थे देयरफॉर हमने हर एक डेरिवेटिव टर्म के साथ उस वेरिएबल की रेसिप्रोकल को मल्टीप्लाई किया है फॉलोइंग द रूल विच आई जस्ट मेंशन सो द इक्वेशन विच यू विल गेट एज अ रिजल्ट दिस इज गोइंग टू गिव यू द रेट ऑफ ग्रोथ ऑफ ईच ऑफ द डिफरेंट वेरिएबल्स वी हैव अकाउंटेड फॉर इन दिस इक्वेशन एंड इट विल बी द रेट ऑफ ग्रोथ ऑफ इनकम विच इज इक्वल टू द ग्रोथ रेट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी plus alpha times the growth rate of the capital factor input plus beta times the growth rate of labor factor input. So, ये जो equation आपको मिली है, इसमें आपके पास जो भी given information होगा, आप उसको डालेंगे और जो भी आपका desired information है, आप उसको calculate करके निकाल सकते हैं. So, for example, if you know कि कोई भी economy grow की है by 5%, in a certain year, एक साल में किसी economy का growth rate was given as 5% percent और हमें ये ये भी हमने हिसाब लगाया कि जो capital factor input है उसकी growth rate थी 5% percent for example and the labour का growth rate was for example 1% percent so if we know the growth rates of each of these and plus we also know that what is going to be the value of alpha and what is the value of beta मैंने पहले भी बताया था alpha और beta आपको elasticity बताते हैं elasticity of the corresponding factor input for example alpha tells us the elasticity of y ke overall income mein kitna variation aata hai agar capital ke ek euro mein ko aap badhaye so what is going to be the responsiveness or the proportionate change in income because of one unit proportionate change in capital फैक्टर इनपुट सो कैपिटल को एक यूनिट बनाने से आपकी टोटल आउटपुट में क्या प्रपोशनेट चेंज आएगा ये मैयर करती है एल्फा सिमिलरली द प्रपोशनेट चेंज इन द टोटल आउटपुट बिकॉज ऑफ वन यूनिट प्रपोशनेट चेंज इन लेबर इनपुट इज मैयर्ड बाय बीटा सो बीटा आपको बताती है रिस्पॉन्सिवनेस और प्रपोशनेट चेंज या परसेंटेज चेंज ऑफ टोटल इनकम टू वन यूनिट इंक्रीमेंट इन द लेबर फैक्टर इनपुट सो इफ यू नो के हमारी इलास्टिसिटी ऑफ आउटपुट टू चेंजेस इन कैपिटल जो कि मेयर हो रही है एल्फा से वो क्या है और बीटा की वैल्यू आपको पता है कि व्हाट इज गोइंग टू बी द प्रोपोर्शनेट चेंज इन टोटल इनकम व्हेन वी यूज व्हेन वी गो व्हेन वी इंक्रीज द लेबर फैक्टर इनपुट बाय वन परसेंटेज चेंज तो इनकी प्रोपोर्शन क्या है इस सर्टन इकोनॉमी में हाइपोथेटिकली अभी जो हम एग्जाम्पल को डिस्कस कर रहे थे सपोज इट इज नोन एंड एल्फा इज नोन एंड इट इज गिवन एज 0.25 and beta value is also known and it is assumed to be equivalent to 0.75. So, ये जो अभी हमने equation derive किया था, इसमें हम अगर हमें पता चले कि income 
ग्रो करा है 5 परसेंट कैपिटल ग्रो करा है बाय 5 परसेंट लेबर ग्रो करा है बाय 1 परसेंट और जो इलास्टिसिटी है ऑफ कैपिटल यानी कि अल्फा की वैल्यू आपको बताई जाए विच इज गिवन एज 0.25 एंड बीटा की वैल्यू आपको पता हो विच इज गिवन एज 0.75 सो आप ये सारी वैल्यूज को ये जो अभी हमने इक्वेशन डिराइव किया था इसमें जब प्लग कर देंगे तो द मिसिंग वैल्यू विच आई हैव डिलीबरेटली मिसड आउट और मैंने आपको बताया नहीं है कि वो ये है सो दैट इज द ग्रोथ रेट ऑफ द टेक्नोलॉजी सो अगर एक इस मिसिंग वैल्यू को हम इस इक्वेशन में रखें और बाकी सारे नॉन वैल्यूज हम इसमें डालें तो वी कैन वेरी इजिली quantify or measure the growth rate of technology in this economy during this time period for which all these values are given right so jo bhi equation humne develop kiya hai that is a very useful relationship in which whatever things we know if we plug the information corresponding to those known factors so jo aapki koi bhi ek unknown value hogi is पूरे के पूरे रिलेशनशिप में यू कैन वेरी इजीली कैलकुलेट डाट बाय फाइंडिंग आउट द डिफरेंस के अभी फॉर एग्जांपल इन दिस केस यू कैन प्लग ऑल दिस रिलेवेंट इंफॉर्मेशन एंड यू कैन वेरी नाइसली एंड इजीली कैलकुलेट द ओवरऑल ग्रोथ रेट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी इन दिस इकोनॉमी फॉर दैट पर्टिकुलर यार similar to all the different types of uh, theories and models we have discussed so far jo aapki production function approach hai iske andar bhi there are several limitations and um, the first biggest limitation that has been identified by the critics is that uh, as long as this particular factor uh, production function is concerned jaise abhi hum copper glass ki baat kar rahe the there is just one combination of factor inputs that can be observed at one time so there may be in senses there may be certain firms jahan zaruri nahi hai for example as the, just like the case we have just discussed humne uh, assume kiya usme ki alpha is given as 0.25 and beta is given as 0.75 so again it is not necessary that in an economy when we are when we will be dealing with the overall um, total outputs calculation and the contribution that has been made by each of these three factor inputs the technology the capital factor in इनपुट एंड द लेबर फैक्टर इनपुट तीनों ने कितना इंपैक्ट किया है डिफाइन करने में टोटल आउटपुट जो आपका प्रोड्यूस हुआ है उसके हम इंडिविजुअल इफेक्ट्स को अगर निकालें या इंडिविजुअल कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन को निकालना चाहें तो वी कैन डू दैट बट वी आर एस्यूमिंग के पूरी की पूरी इकोनॉमी एक सर्टन फिक्स्ड कॉप डिग्लस प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन के थ्रू एक्सप्लेन हो रही है एंड वी आल्सो एस्यूम्ड सर्टन फिक्स्ड वैल्यूज ऑफ अल्फा एंड बीटा व्हिच इज अगैन समथिंग व्हिच इज नॉट नॉट वेरी रियलिस्टिक बिकॉज द वैल्यू ऑफ अल्फा एंड बीटा विल वेरी फ्रॉम सेक्टर टू सेक्टर फ्रॉम डिफरेंट पार्ट ऑफ द सोसाइटी ऑल अक्रॉस द सोसाइटी ये एक यूनिफॉर्म वैल्यू ऑफ एल्फा एंड बीटा नहीं हो सकते हैं सो दिस इज वन लिमिटेशन ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर अप्रोच के वी हैव टू टेक आर uniform value of alpha and beta in order to disaggregate the individual effect of the three variables that have been accounted for in this production function another important thing is that uh, we are assuming as long as this approach is concerned hum isme assume kar rahe hain ki jo technological progress hai wo exogenously determined hai wo external hai wo is factor is पूरे प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन के किसी भी फैक्टर्स के थ्रू एक्सप्लेन नहीं हो रही है सो अगैन वी सी दैट देर आर सेवरल इंस्टेंसेज इन द रियल वर्ल्ड वे आर इफ द लेबर गेट्स मोर स्किल्ड और इफ द टाइप ऑफ मशीनरी विच यू आर यूजिंग दैट इज अ वेरी मॉडर्न और अ हाई टेक वन दैट प्लेज अ वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट रोल इन वेरिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ द टेक्नोलॉजिकल प्रोग्रेस which is being measured by capital t so again we cannot uh, assume uh, capital t as a variable which is exogenously determined there may be situations in which capital t is depend it dependent upon what is going to be the value of capital capital factor input and what is going to be the value or the contribution made by the labor factor input or uh, how how much to what extent uh, the capital is advanced the capital uh, equipment which we are utilizing is advanced or the overall economic progress that has been already achieved in an economy that also plays a very significant role in influencing the uh, the contribution made by technology at a certain point in time 
Uh, another important thing which we uh, observe as a limitation in as long as this production function approach is concerned, we are assuming that there is a constant unit elasticity of substitution between the factors. So again, this is um, another limitation or uh, we, we would say that there is this another uh, inflexibility or source of inflexibility in this approach where we are assuming or fixing that uh, the elasticity of substitution between the two factors uh, yani ke agar aap uh, capital ki bajaye labor ko hi zyada karenge ya labor ko aapne fix kara hua hai aur in order to increase the total output you are substituting capital with labor so the elasticity of substitution has been assumed to be fixed in this uh, approach and it is assumed to be equivalent to plus one so again it is not necessary there may be instances in which the elasticity of substitution between these two factor inputs capital and labor may or may not be equivalent to one so if if it is not equivalent to one then again we would not be able to come up with the realistic estimations or measurements of the uh, disaggregated contribution of each of these factor inputs. Another important aspect which is identified by the critics of the production function approach say that again since both capital and labor uh, when we realistically when we analyze the overall uh, components of uh, capital or when we see that uh, labor ko hum agar disaggregate kare that in, in a certain country when we are taking into account all the different types of labor factor input in order to assess the overall contribution of labor and capital etc uh, in explaining the variation in the total income or the growth rate of, of the total income we need to see that labor in fact is a heterogeneous uh, is, is in fact a heterogeneous set of different types of varied types of labor force so we cannot uh, consider them or treat them as homogeneous sare ke sare labor uh, jo force hai आपकी होमोजीनस लेवल की या होमोजीनस तरह की नहीं है द द एक्सपर्टीज और द स्किल्स विच आर देयर विद डिफरेंट क्लासेस ऑफ लेबर फोर्स मे बी डिफरेंट सो देर इज स्ट्रॉन्ग हेट्रोजैनिटी प्रेजेंट एज लॉन्ग एज द लेबर फैक्टर इनपुट इज कंसर्न इन द एंटायर इकोनॉमी सिमिलरली व्हेन वी डिसएग्रीगेट और एनालाइज द कैपिटल फैक्टर इनपुट वहां भी आपको एक काफी बड़े हद तक हेट्रोजैनिटी देखने को मिलती है बिकॉज देर आर सर्टन सेक्टर्स वे आर the capital input is considered to be um, contributing um, in a very uh, positive way or we can say that waha uska efficiency capital factor input ka relatively zyada ho sakta hai kisi sector mein uska efficiency kam ho sakta hai so because we are in this model we are aggregating the all different types of capital and clubbing them and taking them as a capital k right so this is again uh, something which is unrealistic in this model that we assume that that all the capital and all the labor are homogeneous but in fact we observe severe heterogeneity as long as this the contribution made by each of these two factor inputs is concerned whatever we have discussed so far as long as the theoretical models are concerned that explain the economic growth process we will be seeing that whether these things actually happen in in reality in the real world so for that matter I have picked up a very interesting case study to discuss which analyzes and compares uh, the performance of two countries on the basis of the four major theoretical contributions which we have discussed so far. Uh, we discussed uh, the linear stage model, we discussed the structural transformation model um, as has been uh, explained uh, that can be explained in terms of the roster stages of growth. Uh, and then we moved on to the dependence theory in which we discussed that the countries cannot grow properly because the developing countries cannot grow properly because they are too much dependent upon the developed nations and uh, they follow the models that have that uh, and the policies that are developed for them by their developed nations and therefore they stay behind and then we discussed the new classical counter revolution that emphasize on the significance of market fundamentalism so uh, what we are going to do is we are going to assess the performance of two different countries um, that 
were almost like the same uh, kind of uh, setup that, that showed a similar kind of a performance in the beginning. But uh, as time passed on, based upon these four theoretical contributions, we will, say, we will see that the economic processes or the growth processes in each of these two countries uh, went up to two different types of, uh, show two different types of scenarios. So the first country we will be talking about is South Korea and the other is Argentina. Argentina and uh, why we have uh, chosen these two countries the reason is that both have mid-sized population that is uh, the population in each of these two countries is nearly 49 million like 40 million in Argentina and 49 million in South Korea in 2008 another important characteristic is that for a long time period they were classified as the middle income countries and um, but now if, if we look at the two countries uh, in, in today's context we see see that um, uh, although um, one year, 100 years ago, Argentina was doing relatively better than South Korea. And uh, uh, if we look at uh, the values of the different macroeconomic variables that indicate the performance of the two countries in today's context, we see that the growth process in South Korea has superseded many times the growth process in Argentina and Argentina is still lagging behind, way behind South Korea. So this becomes very evident if we take the statistics for the GNI per capita, uh, uh, the PPP adjusted value for 2008. So um, it is startling to see that Argentina's per capita income for 2008 is just $14,000, whereas the uh, per capita income, which is PPP adjusted for 2008, uh, for South Korea turned out to be 28,000. So you can see that it almost doubled in 2008. And if you take into account uh, today's uh, values for the per capita income in, in the two countries, you will you will see in a, another alarming, alarmingly different values. And you will see that South Korea has progressed so fastly as compared to uh, the way Argentina has progressed. So if we um, basic uh, if we analyze the performance, the economic progress or the economic performance uh, of South, South Korea over the last so many years uh, in the context of the four major theoretical contributions that explain the process of economic growth. We observe that uh, to, a, to, a, to some way um, the growth uh, process of South Korea can be explained by the models uh, we discussed under the head of the linear stage model. We saw that investment initially increased considerably and uh, just to share some data with you, um, we observed that in 1965 the investment ratio was 15% in South Korea and it dramatically rose to 37% in 1990 the investment went up from 15% to 37% and over the period of 2000 to 2007, the investment ratio went further up from 37% to 40%. So um, this indicates what um, what has been identified in Hero Domer model that if you want to ex expedite the growth process, people have to increase the saving ratio and as a consequence, if whatever extra has been saved is transmitted in terms of um, investments, more investments that contribute significantly in expediting the growth process in, econ in an economy. So we observe the same kind of phenomenon existing in South Korea where we observed that over uh, from 1965 until 2007 the investment ratio went considerably up from 15% to 40% and it stayed at 40% for a longer time period as, as has been discussed uh, right now that uh, from 2000 to 2007 for a stretch of almost 8 years it was so very high and it was um, at 40% uh, like we are taking investment, the total investment that took place in this country as a proportion uh, of the total income and it, again it's sufficiently higher. As long as the structural patterns are concerned, we observe that South Korea's uh, economic progress uh, satisfies the way Rosto has explained that initially the uh, economy is sitting in the uh, traditional economy, it can be categorized as a traditional economy, then there are preconditions to take off, then there is take off, then there is uh, maturity which is obtain, attained and then uh, they end up in, in the mass consumption stage. So we observe a similar transition as long as the overall performance of South Korea's economy is concerned that it 
steadily moved from one phase to another and then from next to another and we see that overall all uh, the per capita income grew uh, quite significantly and the annual increase in the per capita income in South Korea from 1965 until 1990 was very stable and it was as high as 7% throughout this time period. So that also um, like confirms kind of this um, transition or the structural transformation and we, it, it was also observed that there was urbanization, people moved from the rural area towards the um, urban area and we also see that there was um, uh, like the size of the industrial sector uh, grew rapidly and uh, uh, that also uh, ag agrees with what we have discussed uh, when we uh, talked about the uh, structural transformation model and when then we discussed the Chenery's um, structural patterns uh, which, which he investigated by doing certain empirical investigations that uh, we see that the overall population uh, shifts from the rural area or the back backward area towards the modern area. So we, we observe a similar kind of a pattern here uh, in South Korea as well that confirm the structural transformation transformation model. Switching over to the dependence revolution, we observed that as long as South Korea is concerned, it was uh, strongly dependent upon the international relations and um, it was a Japanese colony until 1945. So it, it stayed under the influence of external forces and uh, then uh, even uh, later when we see that when it got freed uh, from um, uh, Japan in 1945, uh, uh, after that uh, it was uh, following the instructions uh, by the United States and the United States um, was uh, kind of like influencing uh, politically um, as long as the policy mixes and the defense mechanism uh, of South Korea is concerned. So we see that there is a strong dependence of South Korea on first uh, Japan and then later on uh, on some other uh, for uh, external countries, developed countries. But at the same time, although it shows that the dependence level is relatively higher, but if we look at the uh, progress economic growth um, during the same time period we see that that there is uh, the dependence theory uh, is is being contradicted by the overall economic progress made by South Korea so although we observe dependence but at the same time we observe um, a strong um, uh, or a rapid increase in the overall growth process in South Korea which uh, kind of like conflicts what we discussed in the dependence theory uh, moving further as as long as the new classical counter revolution is concerned once again we see that the performance of uh, South Korea kind of like severely contradicts what we understand uh, as long as the counter revolution approach is concerned uh, that we see we observe uh, lots and lots of uh, intervention by the government in the market uh, and the markets were not very free uh, so despite that we observe that uh, South Korea did really really well and although our large values or the large proportion of taxes were imposed on on people on investors in South Korea but at the same time we observe that overall the performance the economic perform, performance that has been achieved by South, South Korea despite of all these effects of um, uh, a strong role being played by the government sector we observe that it did well and that is also uh, not in conformance or conformability with what the, count, uh, the new classical counter revolutionists believe that uh, the country can grow only if um, there is a free market mechanism operating and the role of government is minimalist. Uh, we see that it's, it's opposite still um, South Korea managed to survive and it did it really really well as well during uh, this time period. Uh, switching over to Argentina, as long as the stages of growth theory is concerned, we see that uh, the progress of growth started right after First World War in uh, Argentina and um, according to certain theorists they say that right after 1930s uh, Argentina was in the uh, sustained takeoff stage but uh, later on we observe that that entire phase uh, instead of uh, Argentina's economy moving further from takeoff to the latter stages that have as we have, have been identified by Rostow we see that there is some sort of perpetuation or uh, the we see that the economy is not doing that well afterwards and despite uh, reaching the uh, takeoff stage uh, 
early in, uh, in 1930s, we observed that uh, the later the performance of uh, the economy was not that good and uh, even uh, the things went so worse or went so bad that Argentina had a negative growth rate throughout 1965 to 1990 period and the 1980s domestic investment uh, was reduced considerably to minus 8.3 percent. Uh, so that uh, indicates that instead of as has been explained by Rosto that once the takeoff stage has been achieved the economy will move further. Um, further to the latter stage, it will move on to the maturity stage. But we see here that uh, since it achieved the uh, takeoff stage way back, but later on, instead of moving further, Argentina's economy uh, st uh, started moving backwards. So this this can be observed by the macroeconomic statistics that of, uh, of different types of uh, variables which we observed that explain the overall performance of this country during that time period that instead of investment going up it started going down investment of uh, instead of uh, the overall uh, size of the income going up it, it started declining so another important thing which we observe as long as Argentina's progress is concerned uh, if we analyze it in terms of the structural patterns uh, Again, we see that uh, some of the usual structural patterns as long as the agricultural productivity is concerned, the uh, industrial employment is concerned, we observe that there is some sort of positivity as long as the overall uh, agricultural productivity and the employment of people associated with the industrial sector is concerned, that is there. But uh, we see that again uh, the fertility also went down and urbanization took place. So all these things confirm that there are indicators that confirm the structural patterns that, have, that were identified by Hollis B. Chanery. But uh, when we move further to the dependence revolution and the, uh, the latter theory which is the new classical counter revolution, we observe that uh, as long as Argentina's performance is concerned, it strongly agrees with what, what was identified uh, by the people who uh, promulgated this concept of dependence revolution and uh, we see that Argentina has has again a strong influence of the external forces and it, it basically um, deals with exporting the primary goods and it was dependent uh, considerably on the developed countries and they played a significant role in slowing down uh, we can say that uh, in slowing down the overall process or in other words we can say that the dependence uh, revolution is uh, whatever theories that come under that, that head um, the performance of Argentina uh, confirmed uh, that yes, uh, we can say that the development process was relatively slower uh, because it De depended a lot on the external forces. Uh, um, another important thing which we need to see here is that multinational corporations in Argentina played a very significant role and we can uh, also see that as long as the overall structural adjustment programs are concerned or uh, export of the primary goods are concerned it was m mostly dealt with by the multinational corporations or we can see that again uh, because of this dependence upon the rich countries or the rich companies or rich corporations Argentina couldn't do really well analyzing the performance of Argentina's economy in terms of the new classical counter revolution is there we see that again there is a lot of government intervention uh, in Argentina and probably because of that also we see that um, uh, because of the so many type, different types of restrictions that were paid made by um, uh, or levied by the government in Argentina Argentina's economy couldn't do well and that once again confirms what we discussed under, under the head of new classical counter revolution so if we compare the two uh, economies progress we see that the uh, the, there are certain um, uh, like realistic uh, backgrounds or realistic examples that uh, show some sort of conformance and disagreement as long as the theoretical models are concerned. Thank you very much.